Hey everyone and welcome to my channel. If you are struggling with trailering issues, I'm hoping this video will help you. The chestnut horse you see in the following clips is my rescue horse Milo, and a few years ago he was very hard to load in the trailer and would rear up and almost flip himself, and it took a very long time. And as you can see here, he is now self-loading when there are other horses in the trailer, and he goes right in when he is going alone. So there's a huge improvement, and I'm going to talk about my methods and show you them on my horses who aren't so good at loading. Horses do not like to go in trailers naturally because they are flight animals and by asking them to go in a trailer we are just asking them to go completely against their nature by entering a small dark box that rattles when it moves and transports them to a new area. So it's generally something that causes them a lot of anxiety and you'll notice that even horses that load well most of them poo when they get in the trailer and this is because it's an anxious response to going into the trailer even if they are good because it is something that is just so far outside their nature. So I'm going to show my methods on how I introduce trailering to horses and how I get them loading well and what I would personally suggest in dealing with these problems. You'll notice that the horses that I am using in this video do not have any really extreme reactions like rearing up or doing anything really dangerous like that, but with that said, horses that are like that, you do what I'm doing in these videos, but you take the steps back several notches and reward for like any step towards the trailer. And for horses that are having that level of anxiety, you may finish your session just getting them within five feet of the trailer and not even anywhere near it and then you'd have to continue on and it's just gonna be more time consuming. Milo used to rear up and almost flip over when he was loading and it was very time consuming, but it's the same thing when he used to do stuff like that. I don't have videos to show, unfortunately, but you just change the timeline that you are teaching them on. But you would use these methods quite similarly and to be frank, with the, even with the horses that I do use in this video, which you'll see, I could have probably gotten those reactions out of them if I applied way too much pressure, but I didn't, and these horses do really trust me and they know me quite well. So I took it very slow and it might be boring because there aren't any big reactions, but you do want to try to avoid those reactions and be conscious of your horse's level of anxiety when you are doing this. And just remember that just because my horses are a certain way in this video doesn't mean you should take things as fast as I did in this video or have the same goals that I had for my horses in this video or finish with the same results. Because if your horses have a very high level of anxiety, it will take you longer and that is okay. So in this clip, you'll see that I have let Banksy come right up to the trailer and I'm rewarding him with treats when he shows interest in looking around or touching the trailer or takes a step forward. I have no pressure on the rope at all, I'm not trying to apply any pressure to get him in yet, so I'm just trying to see how far he'll come on his own and just letting him take his time. And now since he's such a young horse, the important thing to consider with young horses is that you want to keep your sessions shorter and you want to give them lots of breaks in between work. So for him, this whole session was under 15 minutes and we gave him three breaks in between each time that we loaded him and worked with the trailer. So anyways, here I'm just waiting for him and I'm being very patient, standing here encouraging him to come in and reach for the treat and waiting for him to move a leg forward and take a forward step. And I'm applying a little bit of pressure now in that if he turns around or tries to back up at all, I just resist and then as soon as he gives to the pressure at any point, I give back the release on the rope. If applying pressure caused him to back up really quickly or offer to rear, we would still release the pressure then. And for horses who you know have this habit and are likely to do this, you'd want to be very careful with how and when you apply pressure. The other thing you'll notice is that I have left both of the dividers in my trailer open and the reason for this is it makes the trailer look more welcoming and open and since Banksy doesn't know how to tie yet, I don't really want to close them in the divider yet anyways and for any horse when you're getting them used to the trailer and trying to get them comfortable, you want them to have as much space as possible so that they don't feel as claustrophobic and you can close the dividers at another point once they are more comfortable. You'll notice that as I start applying pressure, he gets more nervous, but as soon as he gives any amount, I give back the release and I give him a treat. 
The pressure is just to encourage him to come forward and try to step up a little bit or just come check out the trailer again and as soon as he does that he needs an immediate reward. If you apply too much pressure with no reward you are just going to stress them out and that's not something you want to do. So now that he has had a chance to check out the trailer a little more, I'm just trying to apply a little bit of pressure to get him to move forward. And when he picks up his leg or moves forward at all, it's a big reward, so you want to tell them they're good and give them a treat. And then just be patient and give them their time to get in the trailer on their own. You'll see here that he chose to step up in the trailer with minimal pressure and I reward him largely with lots of treats and scratches and then once he's all the way into the trailer I keep giving him treats inside the trailer to reward him for standing inside. You want the trailer to be a really pleasant place with high rewards so it's important to keep praising them while they're in there and then not leave them in there too long before walking them out because you don't want it to get to the point where they're leaving anxiously and you don't want them to come blasting out of the trailer so it's important to get them to leave calmly and leave before they get too anxious if they are very stressed. So I stop Banksy before walking him out because I don't want them to go marching out and think that as soon as they turn around that they can just come running out. Since this was Banksy's first loading of the day, he comes out too fast and rushes past me into my camera woman who forgot to not stand right in front of the trailer, which is another trailer safety issue, so remind your friends if they're helping you load not to do that, but that's okay. I don't discipline him for this, I just bring him back to me and keep carrying on with what I'm doing. If you get really mad at them for something like that, then you're undoing all the work you just did in getting them into the trailer. Training horses is a lot of repetition until you end with a better result than you started with. So that is what I'm doing with him here. And while I show you the repetition part of what I'm doing, I want to talk about some common mistakes people make when they are teaching horses to trailer. I think a lot of people make the big mistake in trailer loading in trying to chase horses in or have the concept of lunging them around the trailer to make being outside of the trailer more work than being in. And while these methods may end up getting the horse into the trailer, all you are doing is increasing their anxiety level in the long run. And even if they load well, you don't really want them to be highly anxious in the trailer or have a bad association with it because they're more likely to have accidents if they're very scared of the trailer. So here you can see that Banksy is starting to back up a bit from the trailer and I just resist when he is pulling back and then immediately give when he takes a step forward even if he doesn't come as close as where he was before he backed up. It's important not to just hang on to them really hard if they start flying backwards or getting really nervous or not to try to pull them to exactly where they backed up from because you don't want to increase their level of anxiety extremely. In applying pressure, it is uncomfortable for him in the sense that I'm asking him to walk towards the thing that he is scared of, but as soon as he does that, he gets a reward. As I mentioned before, brain breaks are important, so here's a little clip of Banksy getting some booty scratches in the middle of one of his breaks. Another thing to consider is the importance of high value treats. For horses who are really stressed, if there's something they really like, you want to keep some high value treats in your pocket along with lower value treats. Here my high value treat is a carrot and then the other low value treats that I'm using are pieces of grain and other smaller treats. So I'm sure you'll notice that as we progress with this session, he is getting in the trailer faster with less need for me to encourage him in with pressure. Here I applied a little bit of pressure, but I released. And then when I released, he actually went in himself without any pressure being needed. And he just looks a lot more comfortable and at ease with the trailer. So we are nearing the end of our session. So this next clip was filmed immediately after the last one that I just showed you and you'll see that this time there is no hesitation and he follows me right into the trailer calmly. So obviously this is a very natural place to just praise the crap out of him and then call the session quits and just put him away and let him have a chill day after that. He's done enough. It was fabulous. I was very proud of him for this. 
especially for such a young horse to have that level of improvement and to be that brave in this situation, especially since he's away from his friends and having to go into the trailer by himself. It was a very big improvement and I was extremely happy with this result. So this is where as the owner you need to look at how your horse reacts to things critically and decide where to end your sessions based upon that. If you have a very anxious horse, your end point may be them getting within five feet of the trailer, getting within three feet of the trailer. Maybe they just put one foot onto the trailer and that's where you end it. You have to, as the owner, decide where the best place to end for your horse is because if you push it too far and you do too much, you'll end up undoing all of the progress you did earlier in the session. So be very conscious of when you choose to end the session. So not only did Banksy's loading improve in this clip, it, his unloading also improved. He was a lot calmer getting out and a lot calmer getting in and a lot calmer while he stood into the trailer. So Pogo is my coming three-year-old thoroughbred gelding. He trained lightly at the track, but he only has hauled a handful of times because he wasn't at the track for very long. And his issues with trailer loading are not only loading, but the first couple of times I loaded him to get him to and from the track when I was trailering him for his previous owner, he was very hard to unload. He was terrified to turn around and he would just stand there trembling. So it would take us like 20 minutes to get him out sometimes and it would take us a long time to get him in and we'd had to chase him in because his owner needed to get him to the track on a specific schedule. So I wasn't able to do this slow work, which is what has made him a little more stubborn getting into the trailer. So these clips do make it hard for people watching this to judge his level of anxiety inside the trailer, but he was very nervous, very tense, not at all comfortable in there at all. So I just stood there talking to him and I would give him treats to praise him for being in there and just be very quiet and calm. I didn't have him stand in there for as long as I stood Banksy in there for some times because his level of anxiety was higher in the trailer. So I wanted to take him out before it escalated potentially. It doesn't always escalate, but you never know. So you want to make sure that you remove them before they scare themselves in the trailer or lose patience because you don't want them to leave the trailer on a bad note. You'll notice in these clips that he's a lot less receptive than Banksy was to me asking him to get in the trailer because he has a more anxious association with it based on prior experiences. So I work with him similarly to Banksy in how I praise him and how I reward him for coming close and what he does, but I do apply a little bit more pressure on him to encourage forward movement because he does plant his feet quite a lot. So you'll notice me even moving him side to side just to get him to move something towards the trailer. And I also am a lot more patient with him over the course of this session in some ways because he takes longer each time I try to load him to get in than the 10 month old Colt did, which obviously when you're comparing their ages, it may make people angry and say that he's old enough to know better, but he's just a lot more nervous than Banksy was. In these clips where I'm applying pressure, it may look to some people that I am just yanking on him. And for Pogo, he is pretty ignorant when it comes to these leather flat halters. If I had a rope halter in his size, I would probably load him in a rope halter, but he doesn't really pay attention even when you're just leading him normally. He'll go and turn and look at something and it's like he forgets that he even has a halter on. So it takes a little bit more to get his attention in this than it may with some horses, but yeah, I'm not like yanking on his face. He's just planting his feet and ignoring the halter, but he is getting better at leading and I do not want to load him in a chain because I want him to have more of a choice and chain would be more likely to increase anxiety level. Typically with a horse like Pogo who doesn't like moving his feet until he actually decides to just go in, I find that people just say they're being bad or that they're being jerks or that they're being stubborn while forgetting that it's an anxious response. This isn't to say that some horses aren't just stubborn and don't want to go in, but I would say the vast majority of the time it's anxiety. And just because Pogo doesn't have extreme reactions, doesn't mean that he's doing this to be bad. He is actually genuinely afraid. People also may notice that I turn my horses around in the trailer. I do this because since my trailer isn't a ramp load, I find that the vast majority of horses 
prefer to turn around and walk out normally. If you have a straight haul, obviously you can't do this and you would need to back them out. And some horses do prefer backing out. Some horses, if they back out, they just come flying out and throw their heads. That's what Milo used to do if we backed him out, which is also partly why I turned them around. But it's ultimately up to you and your personal preference and what your horse prefers and what your trailer actually allows. I've sped up some of the clips in this video to make it more concise, but the maximum amount of time that I think it took Pogo to actually go in was about five minutes, which isn't very long at all. But the level of hesitation he felt showed his level of anxiety. So even though it doesn't take forever to load him, it's something that I would want to work on because while they don't all need to just walk immediately in the second you open the door, they could have a look. That's fine. I just don't want that level of hesitation because I would like for him to be more comfortable with it. I suppose the next thing to quickly remark on is the fact that Pogo is resting a hind leg in some of these clips. I once had a lady say that if a horse is resting their hind leg that they aren't actually afraid of the trailer. This is completely false. I've noticed horses resting legs in situations where they are totally obviously anxious, obviously more so than Pogo is showing in these clips, just blatantly anxious, very nervous, about to explode, and they will still rest a leg. So I don't think there's any correlation for that. And while you may take it as a sign of relaxation in other settings, don't take it in a problem loading horse as that. So I'm sure you'll notice how much more coercion Pogo takes to get in and how much more he plants his feet than Banksy. He was definitely a lot more nervous of going into the trailer and his trust for me didn't really outweigh that in the same way as it did for Banksy but there was still improvement with how comfortable he was standing inside the trailer. And I do know with horses like him that plant their feet, a lot of people's go-to thing is to go behind them and try to chase them in with a broom or put a bum rope behind them. And I'm not saying that these are bad methods to use when you're in a rush, but the reason why I didn't put any pressure on either of the horses from behind is that this makes them feel like they are being chased in, and it isn't good for getting them comfortable in the trailer and trying to reduce their level of anxiety. So I only do those types of things if I'm in a rush and I absolutely need to get the horse in. When I'm actually working on trailer training with them, it's all about patience and while I do use pressure on the halter, I do not ever do anything that would be like chasing them in or lunging them around the trailer because in the long run this just makes them worse. So while Pogo did not see the same level of improvement that we saw in Banksy, there was still improvement. Even in unloading, he wasn't as anxious to get as far away from the trailer as he was in the beginning. He actually stops with me pretty close to the trailer and he's a lot calmer in general. But for him, this is just something that is just more difficult and that's the way it is in training. Not all horses are going to be the same timeline. So I hope you found my video helpful and for those of you who have horses that aren't super food motivated, if they like something like scratching their neck or they have a favorite itchy spot, you can also use that as a reward. And for anyone who has like a really mouthy horse or a food aggressive horse, I would definitely recommend teaching them to face away from you before they get a treat. Shauna Karash has a really good video on that that I will link in my bio that you can check out um, for basic clicker training. And you could do all of this with a clicker. I say good boy, which is my marker cue, or I say good, and then I give them the treat right away. But a clicker could also be used in this session. You just have to... It, you just have to get them used to the clicker and knowing what the clicker means, and you could do the same thing. But I would definitely recommend checking out the Shauna Karash video about teaching them not to be getting in your space and getting really mouthy and pushy because that will help some of you who already have horses with those problems. And then you can try to use food because it's one of the best motivators and for things that they're really scared of, I do find that this is one of the best ways to get them over it.